Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we have these two processors over here these are the Intel Xeon 5690s that um, I still don't know if they work these are the most powerful CPUs in the X5600 series and I bought them on Amazon in the US and Uncle Joe from Uncle Joe's Playhouse helped me ship them over here so I'm still forever thankful so um, yeah let's just get that out of the way all of the all of the thankfulness yeah I have a Lenovo X3650 M3 down here and that should be able to handle those X5690 90s and so um, we need to power that up um, I actually have four of them right there so I just need to pick one but I think uh, these CPUs I'm gonna let them I'm go they're gonna stay in the server so I might as well make a good choice on that instead of just popping them in the first and the best one um, so yeah I'll think about that so kind of an overview of the servers here this is my 24-7 server right now. It's the IBM slash Lenovo uh, X3650 M4. Beneath that is my old editing server. Well, it's not that old. Just this summer, I removed the editing part up to my 24-7 server. Uh, beneath that again, that one, number 17, another X3650 M3 was the 24-7 server before that one. So this summer everything was moved up there as well. So I kind of consolidated these two servers up to that server combined with some other stuff, which also means that it's bloody cold out here right now because I just have this server running at the moment and it's not producing enough heat to even warm up the data sensor. So I think I want to I want to install the CPUs in this top one number 15. Uh, I believe that number 17 down here has already has some pretty good CPUs. So we will power this one up and somewhere I believe I do have a solid style. Oh, there we have it. <clears throat> have a nice drive here that has Windows installed on in it. Oh, that, uh, that tray isn't looking too good. So, um, but right now this server is running ESXi. I'm gonna pop those drives out of there and pop this Windows drive in there just because it's more fun to see Windows boot than ESXi boot uh, so I can pop that drive in and we can do some testing okay it seems like um, I have a bit of hardware in this server that is making this difficult for me so I think we'll try and see if we can pop some of that out first we have a graphics card or a GPU over here it's not as much as graphics card as just a GPU and NVIDIA grid card uh, has been sitting in here for quite a while so let's let's take that out That's, I am not using it very much right now we might try and put it in a different server at some point uh, oh, this is the magic this is the unicorn riser card for the M3 this is the X16. It took, I think it took me two years to find this card or this riser for this server. They are so rare. So definitely I'm not gonna get rid of that one. I believe I paid as much for that card as I did for this card. Uh, about a hundred euros. So bloody expensive and rare. So then we have another problem and that's this card over here. Let's have that out and have a look at that. Rich. We have a little card here with two uh, M.2. We have an M.2 SSD and we have an M.2 NVMe drive. M.2 SSD go into the RAID controller up here. And that might be teasing me because I'm not able to import. So we need to take this card out because um, I don't know if it's interfering, but I was not able to import the new SSD that I popped in there. So maybe that will work. Put that back in. I uh, see that um, this server has been running a bit more. It's rather dusty inside. 
Alrighty, so I have inserted my Windows 2016, uh, server 2016 uh, SSD into this server and it sees it here as an unconfigured good but I'm not able to import this let's go to the controller settings here uh, and this is what it looks like when you just go into the system let's press start and here it sees that oh we have found a foreign configuration do we want to import and we can press over here and we can see that this is configuration number one so we can select that and we can preview which is also where we import so it sees uh, that configuration we have a SAS drive there we have a virtual disk over here if we select that both of them and press import it fails so that sucks big time it's irritating it doesn't work came up from this um, x3650 m2 which have an older rate controller br10i i believe something definitely an, an older generation than the one down here so that might be why it's not working okay i'm trying to update the different hardware here this is the lenovo x clarity essential update express so it has found update for the ibm wifi flash update the bios the rate controller and the imm is going to be updated so i'm not giving this much chances but well we're gonna update it and i'll just check if it did anything okay everything is updated let's see what this brings us hey fuck i did not expect this i was so sure that i would just go in here and film that it had failed again it actually imported the the drive now i just saved myself installing server 2016 again well cool now we're good here and we can boot and we can get our <laughs> get on with actually changing the cpus hours later ah for yeah haha you had your laugh going out vmware no you're not booting from vmware okay so <laughs> finally we are into windows and we can get on to this i did not know what cpus was in here but it's the intel xeon x3650 and these are 2.67 gigahertz processors even though they can turbo boost a little bit it seems like this goes up to 2.8 gigahertz and when it's not doing anything it throttles down so we right now we are under 2 gigahertz so i already ran the first cpu pass mark test here performance test and the cpus got 10626 um, i have been doing a lot of tests on the model 2 that is but on the model 2 they only that cpu only got 9575 so apparently that's a bit better on the model 3 we'll just put that down here x wasn't that correct yes and if we see that it that's actually better than what we saw on the x5675 but on the Lenovo X3650 Model 2. So the Model 3 gets better numbers. And um, I thought that we should just run Cinebench together. That doesn't take as long as this program. So let's do that. I have open Cinebench down here. So let's run the CPU test. Uh, the two CN processors in here has six cores each so it's a total of 12 cores and with hyper fretting we get 24 of these small squares and uh, we should get some somewhere around uh, 1200 and some 78 90 something let's see where it ends up this is what we got on the last m2 that we tested oh it actually did worse Ugh. how can that be hmm i'll run this again just to make sure okay ran it again uh, got an even uh, lower number so i'll add that number to my little spreadsheet which is a text document so um, yeah okay finally we are at a point where we can go and exchange the cpu so i get to take these riser cards out again and remove the plastic that oh we have a lot of ram here um 
but we're just gonna be replacing these CPUs just like we do so many times and yeah this is really dried up so that might be why it's not performing as well as it could uh, these CPUs has probably been in there for years okay so we're gonna clean that up and we're gonna replace those okay let's remove the CPUs and I don't want to bend the pin so we're just gonna pop it right in I'm gonna make sure that it's lined up uh, and do this as fast as possible so that I don't drop anything down onto that socket there one down let's do the other one while we are at it that way cool okay I've cleaned the CPU coolers here these CPU coolers are really not rated for this powerful a CPU but as I don't have the, the other ones are some copper ones I really want those but I haven't haven't come across them yet admittedly I haven't been looking very much as well but as the server room is 12 degrees or 16 degrees warm right now uh, it will do so we're gonna put those in again oh did I mention I cleaned them I did clean them There we are. Let's put the server back together and see how much faster it is now. Okay, this is a way better sign than on the M2 because it's actually booting. It's showing something on the screen, whereas the M2 over here did, uh, well, nothing showed up when we tried these CPUs in there. So these CPUs must work, but they don't work in the M2. Okay, we're up and running and we can see now that we are we have the X5690, a 3.47 GHz CPU, uh, all 12 of them. Right now it's running somewhere between 2 and 3 GHz down here and we have seen it up as much as 3.6 GHz. I did run the first test and we, uh, we had the first results in right here. It actually does 12,430. 34 that's not bad for a for a server like that so pretty awesome we'll add that to my little spreadsheet down here uh, but let's run Cinebench while we are at it and see how that goes uh, we have that here so let's just run let's see if it will beat this um, x5675 over here we should hope so. Oh, it did, but only by a little bit. So I think what we might be seeing here is that the server is full of RAM. So all the RAM slots are occupied and that might draw down the memory speed a little bit. So that's probably why we're not seeing as much performance as, uh, yeah, hmm. Should we try and take out some RAM? Okay, I took out all the RAM and I put in some new RAMs. These are 32 gigabyte DDR3 LR DIMMs. So uh, we're gonna put this back together and try and run the test again and see if if that was my issue and, and see if I get better performance with it this way okay it seems that 32 gigabyte modules is not supported in the x3650 m3 it uh, it dies here and there is this lovely orange exclamation mark here that uh, doesn't move anywhere and this screen has been on for five minutes and it's not going anywhere either so um, well take it apart again and replace with 16 gigabyte blocks okay now we have the same cpu here but if we go over and check the memory speed 
we will now see that now we are running 1333 megahertz instead and i did run the pass mark test here and before that was 12626 now it's 13499 so a good improvement there let's try and run cinebins again and see if that um, does something good for us we have the old number here Okay, that was not much of an improvement. 1483, so not a, not a big difference in Cinebench. So we got a lot of good questions answered in this video. This was supposed to be a half an hour of video. That's six hours ago. So uh, it, it has been taking way longer than it should. First question was, I was able to import the old, um, the Windows drive after updating the firmware on the RAID controller that was a win i didn't know that one uh, so that is apparently possible to do that also we were not able to use 32 gigabyte blocks in the server i didn't know that but i had to try that so we found that out then it is possible to use the x 5690s in this server which was not possible in the lenovo x 3650 model 2 so um, that was a win but like these cpus that we took out of it they cost about $20 a piece now and the ones we put in there they cost $105 ish so is it really worth um, I did the calculations and it's between 20% and 27% improvement over this CPU even with the better RAM and the clock speed of the RAM did go up to 1333 megahertz didn't do much of a difference but it, it did do a little bit especially in pass mark it improved those numbers but in Cinebench it didn't seem to matter much so um, yeah if you have any great knowledge about this please leave it in the comments below so that me and everybody else can get way smarter than we are now there's always someone that are way smarter in the comments below so be sure to read the comments below and um, well this did work so please also remember to give it that like down there somewhere and hit the bell thingy and um, and all that good stuff so um, thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye